What's up, guys? It's your boy Chance. Um, first of all, good morning to you guys, or good evening, or afternoon, wherever you guys are at. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. You know what it is. But uh, <clears throat> I just wanted to pop on here. I know I do this little live Q and A because I actually got asked. A very surprisingly, well, a couple of interesting questions that actually correlate to each other. And once I explain them, it'll make sense. And one of the first question I got asked was, and this is, mind you, this is actually by a good friend of mine from high school who I've not seen in a long time. We just started catching back up. But uh, this was actually asked to me actually this morning and like it's it was a, a really interesting question and when i explain it you guys will see you know how they go hand in hand with each other and the full story of it um this morning i actually got asked by a good friend of mine that um if like i guess they were just like pure curious like have I ever seriously, you know, been with anyone? And if I have been, why is it that I am single? Well, funny story about that. Yes, I was with somebody um, back in 2015, actually. Um, I was 25. Um, getting ready to be, or no, it was before that. It was in July. It was just before my 26th. Just before my 25th birthday, actually. I was 24, getting ready to be 25. So you can pretty much say I was 25. But her name was Christina Keeley. We had known each other since high school, um, since both her freshman year of high school, which was my junior year of high school, because I was always two grades ahead of her. But, you know, me and her were together and stuff. You know, everything was going great. Um, we were on and off throughout high school the entire time. And you know, like it was it was good, you know, like we were on and off and then we lost contact and then got back together, you know, in twenty fifteen. All right, you know we're together. My ex Heather is no longer in the pitch, no longer in the picture. You know we're split. She's back home. Me and Christina Keeley are, you know, together. You know everything's great. You know I had my life on track. Um, you know I had a lot going for me at the time. I was hanging out with the right crowd. Well, during that time when me and her were together, uh, me and her were actually at a concert down at Lock 3. And I had this whole thing planned out, like, because I knew that we were going down to Lock 3 to see a free show. And I knew that, you know, I really liked this girl. Like, you know, I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. So, you know, I did this crazy thing where you know, me and her decided to just get up, walk around. It was it was in between shows. Like, it was in between sets. So we were up, we were walking around, you know, having fun, just enjoying the, you know, just time with me and her. And, you know, and I'll admit, you know, we got to one part where there was really nobody around. I mean, there was, like, a few people, but not really. And, you know, I had, you know, I'll admit, you know, I had, you know, so I didn't do the whole getting down on one knee thing. But, you know, I did ask her to marry me. And, you know, she said yes. You know, because we had known each other for God knows how long. You know, we were, you know, really, really super close. You know, we were truly in love with each other. Or so I thought. And so, you know, everything was good. You know, we had, you know, told my mom about it. Everything was great. 
you know, everything was going good up at that point. Everything was going really, really good. And, you know, being hesitant because I knew about my best friend Eric. I knew how he was. Um, not Eric Scrubble, but a different Eric. You know, I knew how he was with girls, and I was really, you know, really hesitant. But I took the chance anyways. You know, I introduced them as, you know, brother and sister because I saw him as a brother. So I was like, yo, like, you know, this is going to be your new sister-in-law. You know, everything was great. And he, everything was good, you know, like, he was like, all right, cool, you know, whatever. Well, me and her got into a bit of a fight, and it wasn't one of those serious fights. It was one of those fights where, you know, we could, you know, we would have been able to work it out. Which, what the fight was about, I really don't remember, honestly, at this point. But, if I remember, I'll let you guys know, but, um. You know, we had, you know, uh, like I said, you know, your typical couples fight where it's not serious enough to, you know, break you guys up and, you know, you can work through it. And that's what we did. You know, we worked through it. Well, we were going to. But during that time when we were, you know, kind of, you know, still in the heat of the argument. And we weren't really talking for a couple of days. Um, you know, my best friend, or who I thought was my best friend, Eric, decided to take her from me. He texted her behind my back and basically, you know, stole her from me. And, you know, that's how I basically became you know, single was because of my now ex-best friend Eric stabbed me in the back and taking the girl that I wanted to spend the rest of my life with. And, you know, I can honestly say ever since then, it's been just one bad, fucked up relationship after another, you know. At one point, it was mental and verbal abuse. Next minute, it was, you know, using me. Um, the only real serious relationship I've had since then was my now ex, Abby, but her parents hated me so much that they basically forced us to split up. Like, it was really, really fucked up. They literally forced me and her to break up. Which, you know, was unfair for both sides, but... You know, it's because of, you know, stuff like that and the fears of, you know, being, you know, hurt again that I am still single because nobody seems to really understand my situation. You know, all these girls, you know, want this rich guy that I'm not. Yeah, I might do music, but I don't get paid right now. I'm working out the kinks with you know, dejected and stuff like that. I'm working out on how much I'm going to get paid and stuff like that per month because they got a lot of artists on the label that they need to pay. Like, they've got a whole list. And so, you know, like, you know, there's that. That's, you know, has to do with that or whatever. But, you know, it's because of you know, the mental abuse, the verbal abuse, the being cheated on, the lied to, um, you know, the being lied to, stuff like that, that makes it hard because I've been cheated on, I've been lied to, you know, I went through mental and verbal abuse for almost three years from my ex, you know, Rebecca. And in, it still leaves a nasty scar. And because of that, that's why I am single. And every time I do try to get with somebody, they either want to use me, <clears throat> what I mean, they either want to use me for my money, or they just don't understand my living situation. They don't understand that I have to be in their home to help take care of my mom.
You know, I get paid to watch after the house. I get paid to take care of it. And a lot of them hate that. They want this super rich guy that, you know, is on his own and this and that. And I'm sorry that I'm not on my own. You know, my mom got hurt back a couple years ago and can't really do much now. <clears throat> so I have to help take care of the house. And yeah, she can do some stuff, but not very much. I mean, you know, it, you know, it kills me because, you know, everybody keeps asking me, you know, why am I not with anybody? And because of my best friend Eric doing what he did, and because of all the mental and verbal abuse that I've faced over the years, like, it's, it's hard. Because there's no, there's that fear of, you know, what if this person does that? And then, you know, when you start thinking that, that's when, you know, you start making accusations that really you're not meaning to make. Because of that fear. And, you know, and that's a big reason why. And I've been fighting that. Every day I fight, you know, the memory of the mental and verbal abuse. So, you know, those are really the reasons, those are the very real reasons as to why I no longer have a girlfriend and as to why I, you know, I'm not with anyone anymore. I mean, would I like to be? Yeah, I would, actually. I really and truly would. Like, I would love to be with somebody. I really would. Like, that would, you know, make my life so much better because you know like and all I want really honestly is to have that same love again that I had with my ex Christina like that's all I've ever wanted was to have that back and the fact that I get judged not just by my physical appearance a lot of the times. But a lot of the times I get judged, like I said, because of my living conditions. You know, like I said, I get paid $15 to do major jobs that need done around my mom's house. You know, people don't seem to understand that she got hit by a car and thrown 10 feet a couple years ago. And ever since then, she can't really do much except for doing you know, painting work on, you know, rooms inside of houses. That's all she can really do now. And even that proves to be a challenge at times. There are times where she has trouble going up and down the stairs. Oh, there's actually a lot of times. You know, and it's, it's hard. And that's a major reason as to why nobody is actually willing to build me because a lot of them don't understand, you know, what it's like to have to take care of a family member who's been seriously injured and will never be the same again. Like I said, would I like to be with somebody? Of course I would. But as I said, because of you know, nobody wanted to understand my living conditions and the fact that I was mentally and verbally abused many, many times by a lot of my exes. Like, a lot of people don't understand how that mentally affects me. You know, because I'm always living in fear. Because, like, I want to be, you know, with somebody. I want to be able to say, hey, you know, I know this person isn't going to do this. But there's always that fear that what if, or what is, you know, what if they're doing this? What if they're doing that? You know, that plays in the back of my mind a lot. And, you know, not a lot of people get that fear. Because, like, when I'm with somebody, I'm with them. I don't cheat. I don't do any of that shit. I was raised better than that. Like, I don't believe in doing that shit.
like it, it's hard because like when you go through that you think you know like whenever you're talking to the person you're just like you know you want to believe what they say but it's honestly hard to when you've gone through what i've gone through and like i said i've been working on that and I'm, i'd love to be with somebody again but with this fear of losing them to someone else because i know how a lot of people are these days nobody seems to tr like and this is one thing this is actually also a lesson to you young people out there that are in relationships if you're with somebody that treats you right and you know they treat you right and you know they love you why would you go out and do the shit that you do i that confuses me like why what's the point in being unfaithful and unloyal because you know one thing i was raised to believe and i still go by this to this very day call me old-fashioned call me old school i don't care but when i'm with somebody whether we fight whether we argue or whatever i don't give up on them you know, I try to work things out. You know, just because you get into a fight with the person you're with, that doesn't mean you just up and throw it all away. No. You fight for them. And you fight for the betterment of your guys' relationship. You know, you don't give up on somebody without a hell of a fight first. And that's how I am. Like, you know, I don't, even if we get into a fight, I still will not leave that person. I will still stand by them. And even if I'm not at fault, you know, I will still apologize. But all you young cats out there, man, all y'all just do, you just give up way too quick. And that's, that's what's sad. And that's a big reason as to why a lot of you young guys out there wonder why y'all are sitting there single as fuck. Because you don't know how to be faithful. You don't know how to be loyal. All you guys are about is fucking money and screwing every fucking chick you see. And that's sad. If you're with somebody, stay with them. If they are loyal to you and they're faithful to you, stay with them. I can understand that they're not. I get that. But if they're showing that they are faithful and that they are loyal and that they will not leave you, then why cheat or lie or whatever? It like it, it confuses me, man. Mm. Like you know, it really confuses me. As to how y'all can sit there and be unfaithful, unloyal to the person that loves you. Like, that makes no sense to me. And you guys wonder why relationships are dying and failing? That's a very big reason. But I hope that this answered your guys' questions. Um, like I said, you know, it's been rough but i've been getting through it you know i've been doing what i can to getting back to normal to where i don't have those fears is it hard of course but you know i'm still doing what i can but like i said guys i do hope that this answered y'all's questions and i'll see you guys later man i'm out of here peace